Hey guys, um, this is our recording for 4.5. So we are going to start with me telling you or um, writing down all of our steps so that way you can use the steps to analyze um, all of the functions below. Okay, so here are the steps. I'm, I think, I, I don't think I gave you enough room. Oh, there's your bell. I don't think I gave you enough room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to squeeze it in. Okay, so let me get a pen. Step one, factor the numerator and denominator of r. So factor the numerator and denominator of r. And remember, r is your rational function. Once you're done factoring, find the domain of r. Okay, so factor it and find the remain. Step number two, write r in the lowest terms. Write r, which is your rational function, in lowest terms, okay? Yes, it did break this down to choose into two steps, okay? So don't reduce in step one. It wants you to reduce in step two. Step number three, locate the intercepts of R. Step number four, locate the vertical asymptotes. So locate the VAs. Step number five, draw a number line. Draw a, oops, Draw a number line and use the x-intercept and use the x-intercepts to find the intervals on which the graph of R is above the x-axis and below the x-axis. Okay, so we did this step already on the last time that we, we analyzed our polynomial. Well, we're doing this again because we're analyzing our rational function, okay? Step number six, locate the HAs or OAs. So step six, locate horizontal asymptotes or oblique asymptotes. Not only that you have to locate these, this is something that's new. Determine points, if any, at which the graph of R intersects. these asymptotes. Okay, so not only to find them, you have to tell me, hey, does it cross or does it touch the um, HA or OA or does it not? And our step number seven is we are going to use all of these to graph it by hand. Use steps one to six to graph R by hand. Okay. All right, so now that we have the steps, let's do example one. Oh, okay, so I need you to fix this for me, okay? Instead of example seven, can you fix that to example one, please? I'm gonna have to fix your notes. Okay, here we go, example one. Use steps one to seven to analyze the graph below. I'm giving you r of x equals 
x squared plus 3x plus 2, all of it is divisible by x. So step number one, okay, step number one says factor the numerator and denominator. So I can definitely factor out the top, okay. By now, if you can't factor, please come and see me at tutorial to get help, okay. So the two factors on a numerator are x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 1. On the bottom, it's a single term, it's a monomial, so we don't have to worry about it. And it went on and said, hey, once you're done factoring, find the domain of it. So the domain of this is going to be all real numbers except when x is at 0. Okay? So that's your step 1. Step 2. Hey, write r in lowest terms. Can you simplify this? Can you reduce this? And the answer is no. Because the answer is no, you can write the original or you can write the factor form. It's really up to you. I'm actually going to write the original, okay? Because you can't simplify, so it doesn't really matter if you write the original or the factor form. They will be both exactly the same. Step number three, locate the intercepts of R. That means I'm looking for X intercept and Y intercept. So step three, I'm going to, I'm looking for X intercept first. So X int. X int is when Y equals to zero, so zero equals I'm just going to write the original back, x squared plus 3x plus 2 all over x. I'm going to change my pen because I'm going to make this into a fraction. So I'm going to cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, I am going to end up with 0 times anything is still 0. Then I'm going to cross multiply this way. 1 times anything is itself. So I'm going to end up with an x squared plus 3x plus 2. So notice this, okay, I want you to check this out. Notice how this right here is exactly the same as the numerator, okay? So when you're looking for an x-intercept, it's the same as just taking the numerator and setting it equal to zero. So you don't have to cross multiply any longer. Well, I've already factored out the numerator, so I'm just gonna copy out the factor from step number one. So zero equals x plus two times x plus one. And I'm just going to set each one equal to 0. So my x is going to be at negative 2. And the other x-intercept is going to be at negative 1. I'm also going to find the y-intercept. So y int. y int is when x is equal to 0. So r of x, which is the same as y, which is, this is going to be 0 squared plus 3 times 0 plus 2 all over 0. Well, you can't have zero in the denominator, okay? You can't have zero in the denominator. So in this case, this is not possible, so there is no y it. Step number four, locate your VAs. Well, your VA is going to be, let's use step four right here. Your VA is exactly like the denominator, or the domain I meant, take the domain, Instead of making x not, it's just going to be x equals to 0. Step number 5, we are about to draw a number line. I'm slowly going to try to squeeze this in, okay? Step number 5 said, hey, use the draw a number line and use the x-intercepts. I have two of them, okay? And put it on this number line. Then tell me when is it above the x-axis and when is it below the x-axis. So I'm going to pick some really big numbers, okay? So positive 100 first. When I plug in positive 100, well, positive 100, I'm just going to use a highlighter really quick, okay? Positive 100, and I'm going to square it. Oh, you know what? Let me just write it out. Positive 100, oops, positive, let me erase. So positive 100 square plus 3 times positive 100 plus 2 all over positive 100. This is definitely going to be positive, okay? But I'm going to go and pick some extreme value, negative 100. Negative 100 in quantity, that is, square plus 3 times negative 100 plus 2 divided by negative 100. So this is really, I'm going to highlight this, this right here is your end behavior. That's the one that matters most. That's the most significant. Well, anytime I square, it's going to be um, positive, right? 
but positive divided by a negative number on the bottom. So I'm going to end up with a, a negative. Okay. And the last one in between, I don't have a lot of choices, so I'm just going to go and pick like negative 1.5. And this one, I'm just going to have to work it out cautiously, okay? But I can use the factor form, so this is easier. Negative 1.5 plus 2 times negative 1.5 plus 1 all over negative 1.5. So it looks like this is a positive times a negative times a negative divided by a negative. So on the top, that's a negative divided by a negative, so this is going to be a positive. So this is a positive. So on step six, step six says that we have to locate your either horizontal asymptote or oblique asymptote. So I'm just going to go and do it right over here. Okay, I'm just going to use a different color pen so we can distinguish these. So step six. So HA or OA, that is the question, okay? So let's look at the degree on the top. The degree on the top is two, okay, because of this. The degree on the bottom is one because it's x to the first power. So because that's an improper fraction, this is going to be an OA. And we're gonna write OA, and we're gonna write y equals, we'll fill that in. I'm going to do long division, so x goes here x to the third, I'm sorry, not x to the third, let me erase, x squared. So that's x squared plus 3x plus 2. So here we go. x squared divided by x is x. We are going to multiply. We're going to multiply back. So that's x squared. Change the sign. That is 0. Bring down your 3x. 3x divided by x is going to be a positive 3. 3 times that is 3x. Subtract. We're going to get 0. Bring down your 2. 2 cannot divide by x, so this is actually your remainder. So your remainder is going to be written 2 over x. Okay, But remember, x approaches 0, so this remainder is going to be insignificant. I'm sorry, x approaches infinity. So 2 divided by some huge, ginormous number it's going to be approaching zero, so that's going to be insignificant. So your oblique asymptote is just simply y equals x plus 3. So we are going to box this up. In addition to finding H, A, or O, A, it wants you to determine, okay, determine whether the function, this rational function, intersects the asymptote at all. And how do we decide that is this, intersect or not, okay? intersect OA, and that's our question, and how do we do that? This right here, let me highlight this, this is Y equals, okay? This is over here, this pink right here, it's also Y equals. So these two Y equal are supposed to be the same. Because they are the same, you can make them equal to each other. Isn't that funny, okay? So, but instead of using the factor form, I can use this one, the original from the problem. So I'm going to go, hey, x plus 3 equals 2, x squared plus 3x plus 2, all over x. And from here, I'm going to go and make this into a fraction because I'm about to cross multiply. When I cross multiply, let me just make more space. When I cross multiply, I have an x squared plus 3x equals 2. 1 times anything is itself, so this is now an x squared plus 3x plus 2. Well, let's check this out. I have an x squared over here and an x squared over here. These two should cancel each other out. I have a 3x over here. I have a 3x over here. Those two should reduce. So now on the left, I end up with 0, and on the right, I have 2. Well, 2 is never the same as 0, so that's not true. Because it's not true, we are going to answer does not intersect away. And yes, you have to answer that. All right, guys? Okay. So those are the six steps. We have one more. I know, I know. Okay. This step, it's just kind of putting it all together. 
Okay, we have everything we need. We just have to use steps one to six to graph it by hand. And I'm gonna use a blue marker because I feel like I'm gonna be invading. Okay, I'm just gonna use a ruler. That is some quite ugly, sorry. Okay, all right, so here we go. My ruler at work, much better. Okay. So we are doing step seven. Okay, so step seven, I'm gonna first plot in your, um, your VA, okay? So you have two VAs. I'm sorry, you don't have two VAs. I'm gonna do, um, my bad, I'm gonna do step three, the x-intercepts, okay? X-intercepts are at negative two, one dot at negative two, one dot at negative one. Those are the two x intercepts. We don't have any y intercept. I do have one uh, VA, okay? Step four is your VA, I believe. So let's do step four. I'm just gonna use a different marker here. If you have a pencil, you can just do it slightly to the right of this, and that's totally fine, okay? I have one oblique asymptote, so let's graph that as well. I'm gonna start as the y-intercept at three. I'm gonna make some tick marks. And yes, you do need tick marks, guys. You can't just be sketching these, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go in and start graphing. Oblique, it's y equals x plus three. So go up three, make a dot. Your slope is one over one. So I'm gonna make a few dots just to make sure I have these nicely graphed out, okay? Okay, so with my ruler, I'm gonna make some dash or dotted lines here. All right, I missed a dot, so make that bigger. There you go. All right, so that's your step four. I'm um, sorry, step four is your VA. Step six is your um, oblique. What am I missing? Step five, okay. So I'm gonna use my step five here to graph this out. Are you ready? So step five, it says, hey, on the left of two, on the left of negative two, I should have negative. So here's negative two, I should be negative. And remember, you're hugging the asymptote, okay? In between negative two and negative one. See this right here? It's positive, so make sure that goes above the x-axis. Then, and then it says here, um, make sure we have something that is, so we're gonna be hugging this all the way down here, okay? So that's first step. Okay, so now, oh, you know what I missed? Go back and fix this for me. Um, I need to add in a VA as well. Okay, so insert this really quickly for me. Um, so step five, draw a number line and use the x-intercept and VA. My bad. X-intercepts and VAs. Okay. We have one VAs, so what I need to do is I need to add in a zero. So go ahead and erase that for me. Okay, so we have a zero. Okay. So that's the part I'm missing. Okay. So in between, this is the x-intercept here at negative two, an x-intercept at negative one, and then we have a VA. I need to put a VA on this as well. So what I'm going to do is, we tested what, negative 1.5 already, and negative, dude, did I just put a zero in between there? Oh, sorry. It, my bad. I should not put in a zero right there. A zero goes over here. Okay. So I tested what, negative 1.5 already, and we said negative 1.5 was positive, okay? Um, I need to test between negative one and zero. So can you please do me a favor and erase this right here? Because I need to test that, okay? All right, so I'm gonna do, which is over here. So R of, let's say negative 0.5, okay? So I'm gonna plug it back into the factor form. So negative 0.5 plus two, that's positive. Negative 0.5 plus one, that's positive divided by negative 0.5, so that's negative. 
So that's going to be a negative on the bottom because a positive divided by negative is a negative. So that's a negative. Okay, so that's what I'm missing. And then we did a positive 100 already, which is over here. So that's going to be positive. Okay, so because I did that incorrectly, I want to go back and fix this. Um, so notice how on the left-hand side, okay, on the left-hand side of negative 2 is negative. So this is where this is coming from, okay? Then in between negative 2 and negative 1, it says it's positive. So it's above the x-axis, okay? Then... On the right-hand side of negative 1, it says negative, so I'm looping it back down. Now, we have one vertical asymptote, so we should have two curves, okay? But it says everything else on the right of 0 is going to be positive. So what that means is this. That means it's in this one, okay? And yes, all you do is you're sketching. You're hugging that asymptote. Now, the reason it has to be there is because, and I'm going to draw this out, it cannot be here, okay? It cannot be here at all. If it's here, notice how it's telling me that there's some negative values here, and that's not possible because it's telling me that everything has to be positive. So what you need to do is erase this, okay? It's not supposed to be here. I was just drawing that out so that way you can see how it cannot be there. But because everything on the right-hand side has to be positive, it can only be in one location, which is this. And yes, all you do is sketches, okay? You just need to hug your asymptote. And that is the end of today's video notes. Thank you for listening.